Hey guys, Debogi here once again, and it is time for a podcast. I know it has been a while since my last one, and I do apologize about that. I really appreciate you guys still asking about them and wanting to see them, so thank you. Thank you for you guys that enjoy these podcasts, because I really love making these videos. Um, I It's a really great way for me to just sit here and talk about things that are on my mind, and just let... I guess let loose with that. <laughs> you guys know I love to talk. So podcasts is a great way for me to do that. And I thank you for enjoying. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go ahead and make this podcast based off of video games, a tribute to video games, because video games are super important to me. I am really passionate about video games. And I think that it has shaped me for the good and the bad of who I am today and definitely wouldn't be the person I am today without video games. And I think video games, um, especially when I was growing up, got really negative rep, you know, of how much it wastes time and a lot of negative things around video games. Uh, but I think with anything, with, uh, <laughs> with anything, it needs good balance, good moderation, because um, I, I do believe with, with anything overdone, it can be destructive to your life. But I really, really treasure video games and what it has to offer to the table. And uh, th this podcast is actually kind of um, inspired by a question that my ex asked me when we were dating. Uh, she, she did not like video games at all. Um, she thought it was a huge waste of time. And she just couldn't wrap her head around why anybody would want to play video games. And actually, she couldn't wrap her head around why people would even want to watch series on Netflix or on TV. Just a lot of wasting time, she thought. So I uh, I wanted to go ahead and, well, my, well, I don't know how the cord got like that. I want to go ahead and, um, I guess, talk about why, or I guess, the, the benefits of video games. Because she asked me, um, how are video games good for you? What, what do you find or how did it really, I guess, benefit your life in a way? And that got me thinking. Um, and that, that was asked, you know, a few years ago, but I was just revisiting that conversation and, uh, didn't really get to give her, you know, an, a great answer on the spot, but I did, I did try to explain myself the best I could on the benefits of video games and why I think they are helpful. But, I will go ahead and go through my list that I created of some of my top video games in my life and just how it shaped me, my experience with them, because I, uh, I love games. And these are some very special games that I hold close to my heart. Um, of course, there's many, many games, but these are, uh, are going to be the few that I'm going to name off. I'm going to try to name them in order that I played them. But forgive me because I didn't really organize this video. I just wrote a list down, so I could be jumping all over the place. So this is kind of a, a wing in it type deal without the wings. Oh, I really want chicken wings now. No, this is not food. This is video games. All right. First video game I want to talk about, or I should say console, was the Game Boy. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. Um, I was playing a lot for I let me back up a little bit what my first games that I got exposed on the Game Boys were Link Awakening and Pokemon Red um, these two I want to go ahead and talk about together because these two games really opened up my eyes for adventure and just the limitless possibilities that a game can provide you that was my first time kind of experiencing the exploring mode, being able to go off onto your own and create your own path, your own story, um, because it wasn't very linear. I mean, they did have, of course, the next steps, the next quests that you need to do in both Zelda Link Awakening and Pokemon Red, but you were able to go off on your own and break some jars or go run around in the wild grass and find a Pokemon um, and just kind of shape your team on how you wanted to do so. Like when I met up with my friends for Pokemon, we never had like the same team comp. We were never experiencing the same things. We were always kind of forging again, our own path and story. And I was just so fascinated by that. And that really opened my mind for just my imagination. And whenever I was playing those games and then outside of those games, my imagination would run wild. And I think that was very beneficial for me being able to just think outside the box, being creative and really just kind of reaching for 
those impossible things, you know, and like, like that one saying, oh gosh, I always say this lyric, like when you shoot for the stars or sorry. Yeah. When you shoot for the stars, if you miss, at least you're on top of the world. Pitbull. I think I've at, quoted that at least like six or seven times on my YouTube channel, but you know, it's just being able to reach out there as far as you can reach, but you find things along the way. Um, and that's kind of what Pokemon and Zelda did for me on the Game Boy. And that was my first time experiencing that sort of adventure on those handhelds. And it really like made me hungry for more. Um, and that's kind of how I got into N64 then was my next console. And this console was, I, I would say, for most of us, it was a very, very huge milestone, like the stepping stone into the gaming world. It was really big and there was really amazing graphics on your TV um, and it was just a really beautiful console. So the first game I want to talk about on N64 is Harvest Moon. Now this game is pretty funny, <laughs> uh, or at least how I got into it was kind of funny. Um, so I got an N64 for my birthday, and I remember my friends Luby and Mike were there with me uh, while I was opening up my present, my N64, and they were really excited. They said, "Yo, you got to try out a game called Harvest Moon. What you do in this game is you're, you know, collecting demon souls." under a full moon and you're just like killing a whole bunch of things super action-packed really dark you know you're harvesting pretty much like the souls under the moon and I was like whoa okay you know I I guess I was really looking for an adventure type of game um, after Pokemon and Zelda and I was like all right yeah you know like I, I I'll try this out of course you know with the N64 I got Mario and um, some other games that came with it but I, uh, I really wanted to try out this Harvest Moon, so I went to GameStop, and I picked up Harvest Moon, and uh, I started playing it with them, and when we turned it on, the first, like, 20 minutes, they were like, I don't think this is the game that I was, you know, we were thinking of. I was, like, the first scene was me plowing a land <laughs> and then planting crops. If you guys never played Harvest Moon, it's a very slice-of-life game. You know, there is no action in Harvest Moon. You literally are just life that's that's the game you're planting you're taking care of animals you're falling in love you're getting married starting a family and I was like huh you know this is interesting you know I've never thought about farming before and I was just plowing the land and just planting seeds um and they're like all right you know you don't have to play this and they're like really sorry about it and they said you can return it and you know we, we just definitely didn't think that it was the game that we thought it was going to be and I said you know all right yeah I'll return it so they went home and I was going to return it, you know, the next day or whenever I was able to get to the game store again. But I just kept playing it and I fell in love. And to this day, Harvest Moon is by far my favorite game. I would say it opened my eyes for those types of games. You know, of course, we saw like Stardew Valley or uh, what, what are some other ones? OK, I can only think of Stardew Valley <laughs> right now. Um, uh, there was like four seasons or that was, I guess, part of Harvest Moon as well. But it, it's like these types of Harvest Moon games. I played a few different clones or styles, I should say, um, of, of Harvest Moon. But that was a game that really, I think, made me fall in love with love and the simple life. I, uh, after experiencing that game, you know, I was just so into it. I was immersed into it. All right. And th that like really got me wanting to like, I guess, learn more about romance just in general and just, you know, feeling that love feeling and really like exploring the feelings and like getting kind of emotional and deep. And it really opened up my emotional side, I would say. Um, I was really craving and hungry for like, you know, slice of life animes. And I was really getting into those also and just kind of you know, finding these like paths, these like almost my, my personality just being really exposed because I'm a very emotional person. Um, and my friends get on me quite a bit for that, like not thinking with logic and being very emotional. And, uh, it gets me in trouble sometimes, but I, I just love 
feelings and I love talking about feelings and I think Harvest Moon was had a huge impact on that because I was so invested into the characters stories and unlocking their cutscenes and being able to learn more about each character in the game and their feelings and their emotions and I just I love that you know and it was just incredible so I uh, I really valued Harvest Moon on what it gave me what it it offered me in my life I should say uh, just learning how to really appreciate simple things and not everything has to be on the go on the go super fast paced because we miss a lot of things when things are super fast paced one of my favorite songs um, inaudible, inaudible Men- melodies inaudible melodies by Jack Johnson you know uh, slow down everyone you're moving too fast the frames can't catch you when you're moving like that it's it's just like when you're moving so fast in life, it's really hard to to find the beauty in things when we're always trying to get to the next step, the next goal, you know, always just just achieving and achieving and achieving. And we can't just take time for ourselves. Harvest Moon, I think, played a big factor in that on just opening up that side of me um, for sure, because there was no guns. There were no killing. It was literally just a game of life. And it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. Uh, I apologize also, guys. I'm going to be going on tangents in this video, <laughs> this podcast, um, how, how I usually do. So we might get really off track. Pull me back in if I do get too off track here. Mm. All right. So with the N64, though, of course, the Zelda, I think Orcarina of Time was one of, the, one of my favorite games as well. And, you know, there's a few others on there. That played a huge role, but I'll say uh, Mario Kart for 64 was a very, very, very crucial one. Um, this this one I want to thank my mom for because <laughs> I would make her play the balloon game with me. That's the only game mode I liked in Mario Kart was the balloon hunting game where you have the three balloons and you're on the maps and you're trying to hit your opponent with whatever power-ups you get to knock off their balloons um, and I love that game and I was so good at it you know and I was I was good <laughs> I was good uh, and my mom was my my play partner like she was the only one there so I didn't have any siblings and you know a lot of times our friends couldn't hang out so I would be playing the balloon game with my mom and I would destroy her guys it was just unfair and she hated it she hates that game if, if you ask her to this day she she will never play that game again because I just tormented her like crazy in that game what I did was I would just set traps all over the place first of all I would screen snipe her right because that time it was split screen so I I did the undid I know this is you're not supposed to be doing this but I you know I'd screen snipe her where I look at her screen and see where she's at in the map and then I would go there and I would just get all these power-ups like bananas and upside down question marks and like all these traps and I would just place them all around her and I would just like taunt her right I'd like throw a little green shell at her and then it would like miss and then she would come and chase me and I would lead her down this alleyway and then she would get just swamped by all these traps that I laid down and I would just love it and she she hated that um but <laughs> You know, and even like just like being able to like do the skill shots with the green shells and being able to like hone down the uh, the trajectory when you're throwing a banana, just all these different things. I was like loving to try to improve and not really be better than my opponent, but be better than my previous self. And that like something that really exposed that that competitive side inside of me that um, that I wasn't trying again, not trying to beat the other person, but. Just be better, become better. How far can I push myself, my own limits? And that was just a wonderful thing. And I, that's like when it really started to open that path up. And that was just like the surface of it. I'm actually very, very into competitive games. Um, and I'm going to be talking about the next one now for PC. Um, I got really into StarCraft, StarCraft 1. And re- that like, again, just that competitive drive, being able to really manage your army, micro them, macro your your resources, and just like how you can play the most efficiently while out outplaying your opponent. You guys all start at the even level battlefield, all the same amount of minerals and the same amount of workers, and you're just you're there just trying to best your opponent. And I loved it. 
I absolutely loved it. I loved 1v1ing people and just like seeing where I went wrong, watching my replays in class. I would like be drawing out my my units and like just trying to like think of strategies. And this game really opened up also my time management and being able to strategize. I think this StarCraft was a huge game that really kind of strengthened those skills in me. I do value and take pride in myself for being able to manage time well. Um, in, in a way, like timing things, you know, like I, I like to be on time to things. I like to be able to really, I guess, see how long something will take and try to like make it more efficient in a way. Um, but I, I think StarCraft really did, I guess, helped me hone that skill a little bit or just expose that that desire for that because it was very very time oriented in starcraft you needed to get your units out at a certain time have a certain amount of minerals at like the 9 30 minute mark you know or being able to pump out six lings at two minutes or something like that you know so it, it was like very on the dot you saw what time the game was at and where your units are at what you should be at you know if you had a hiccup if they came and attacked you early you need to readjust your whole schedule and being able to just adapt to what's happening and be dynamic with with everything that's happening on the battlefield and I love that I love just being able to be dynamic and being able to change on the spot and adapting to your surroundings and what what the game throws at you because the opponents people are all different that's why I hated playing against computers and I love playing against people because they're so unpredictable Everyone thinks differently and it's just beautiful that way, you know, and you can learn so much for each game that you played. Um, so that was just a really wonderful game for me that did that. And, you know, just kind of, again, going with StarCraft and being competitive, um, I would say, what, what's what's the next one? All right, we'll, we'll come back to the competitive games a little bit later. We'll, we'll slow down and we'll stay in the PC realm, I think. So PC realm... Um, you know, StarCraft, uh, oh yes, back to StarCraft really quick. That was the first game also that, um, I played online, like against actual people that weren't sitting next to me because that was just not with the N64, <laughs> you couldn't play online. So it was really cool being able to play someone across the world from you, um, and just being able to 1v1 them. So I just felt like that was huge. And that really also got me into computers and PC, which I didn't really have one at the time. So I was always going to the library and using their computers um, <laughs> as much as I could. And so another one going with StarCraft and PC and just getting opened up into this online world, I would say the next um, few games that were very impactful to me were Habo Hotel and Coke Music. Now, these are chatting games. They're, th these games are going back a little bit to Slice of Life. So if you're not familiar with these two games, you're just talking. It's like almost a chat room, but you have avatars. It's almost like VR chat, but you got very, very discounted VR chat. Let's just say that. And I thought it was just fascinating getting to meet people and just trying to figure out different types of people's personalities and honing down mine. And I did, you know, sometimes fake and be someone else a little bit or, you know, not like my own personality. Maybe I'll have a few different avatars and this guy would be like super cool, laid back. This guy would be very uptight. This guy, you know, and I'd like almost try to see like different personalities a little bit. Um, and it was tiring. And I realized also being in those chat rooms was exhausting for me because I was just there's so many people so much chat and like so much talking whispers and all this drama and I think that was a game that I realized how I valued being alone and <laughs> my introvert side kind of showing a little bit because it was cool being able to talk to people and like with a whole bunch of different types of people in in the chat rooms because that's how it was kind of formed and made to be is that like you were in a hotel and there's just a lot of people in there, you know, and you can kind of go maybe sit down on the couch and just have like a more intimate conversation with one on one. But it was like a lot of people running around. So I, um, I got exhausted, but I really enjoyed when I like made some close friends and we were able to just talk 
like in, you know, privately, like in rooms or, you know, sitting on the couch or chilling by the pool. And it wasn't like with the huge crowds of people. So when I started to learn like what I liked and what I enjoyed and what I disliked, I realized that's kind of how I am in life, you know, and that like, that's something, a really big thing that it taught me is I do enjoy intimate conversations with people, like being just one-on-one or very small group settings. I enjoy being a social ninja in a way where I'm not the center of attention, but I like to really get to know somebody, you know, and I, yeah, I really do not like being a center of attention and like, you know, telling a story and having everyone like being captivated in what I'm saying. I just really enjoy talking to one person and getting to know them as an individual and not getting to know a group, you know, cause a group has their own personality in a way. It kind it kind of does. I don't know if you like experience that or if I'm just kind of now going off a really weird tangent, but groups of people seem to have their own personality. They like are one unit in a sense. And because they're in a group, they're kind of able to get along together and they kind of conform into like one hive mind in a way. Um, so when you're like getting introduced to a group, it's almost like a group of different people that make one entity. I don't know. Maybe that's for another discussion. But yeah, I, I don't know where I was going with that. But how about Hotel and Coke music, the chat rooms that kind of <laughs> exposed uh, my personality and just my my love also still just kind of firing that love for online play and online community. I thought that was just so cool to have because, I mean, even though it was such a public domain, you're able to still find private like sectors, you know, and still feel like you can be alone in public in a way. So that was really nice. Mm. All right. So, I mean, I know there was a lot more huge games that were impactful on PC. I don't I don't think I want to talk about Maple Story too much. I mean, M- Maple Story was pr- I probably should talk about Maple Story because Maple Story was a game that changed my life just immensely. It was, <laughs> hands down Maple Story is a game that that probably has shaped 60 70% of me. I don't know <laughs> who I am today. It has just been such a big game in my life. We'll get we'll get back to Maple Story, but we're going to leave PC for now. We're going to go to Xbox and consoles a little bit more now. Um, I want to talk about Halo, Halo 1. Halo 1 for Xbox was an eye-opening game for me. Again, feeling my competitive side and just really striving for those skills and being able to hone down on your skills and work at something and see improvement. I remember my friend Lewis invited me over to his house, I think when I was maybe 11 or 12, and he showed me Halo for the first time, and he taught me how to hold an Xbox controller because I've only held an N64 controller, and, you know, how to move and just, like, the X and the Y axis. I remember the guns and, like, just, like, struggling with that um, and, like, shooting, and it was my first first first-person shooter game, and that was just such an incredible experience and it's just oh my gosh um I got hooked absolutely hooked on Halo and Halo was just um one of my I would say still is my favorite FPS game for sure and just being able to be really competitive with it now I didn't get to I played a lot of Halo 1 I'll say that and it was really awesome because it was at that transition where Halo 2 was coming out we're like right on that borderline but Right when I got into Halo 1 and I experienced it, I like got my friends together and we had some of the nastiest, hugest Halo parties. I'll just say it. It was so cool being able to just hone people together and being able to like get everyone in the same room and just playing like attaching Xboxes together, attaching multiple TVs. We had four TVs one time attached um, with four different Xboxes, you know, few on each Xbox, and it was it was just wild. But anyways, Halo really uh, 
really got me into first person shooters and we're going to go into Halo 2 now. Sorry, hold on one second. I know this is this is rude checking my phone in the middle of the video. Okay. Just want to make sure nothing too important. But now back into Halo 2. Halo 2 was um was when I really got serious with the competitiveness to it. I I started a clan called Six Snipes with a C. So S I C Snipes, all caps. And I was Fishstix 21. Um or was it 25? I was something, one of those numbers. And uh I was I was pretty good. I mean, I don't like to brag or like, you know, I like to stay humble, but I feel like in Halo 2, I was very very good. And the sniper rifle in my hands was I was just unstoppable. I felt like I remember Blood Gulch, I think was the map's name. Um, to join my clan, anyone was welcome to join my clan, but if you wanted to rank up to become officer, you would have to beat me in a 1v1 sniper match, and then you can become officer, And or was it co-leader? I can't remember, but you had to beat me in a 1v1, and the rule was I would always be in the same spot, and I would always tell you where I was at. I was on the cliff side of Blood Gulch. I want to say that was the name of the map. And I wouldn't know where you're at, but I'll just be jumping around there. And when you take a shot at me, you better hit me. Because if you didn't hit me, you were done. And I would take you down. And that was so much fun. And my, my clan actually made it on the ho- the homepage of Bungie. Um, so that was really awesome. So it got kind of, you know, a little bit known, our six snipes. And... I remember I met one of my best friends on there. His name was Framed Predator. Um, and I met him, I think, probably, it, it, yeah, it was in a match. It was in a random match. And some of our teammates were making fun of him because he had a little bit of a higher-pitched voice, I remember. And I, like, really defended him and, like, stood up for him. And, like, I, I really hated that they were, like, really bashing on him. Um, so actually it was me and him. We became really good friends. He was a bit younger than me. I think I was in my, you know, middle school years and he was definitely in his elementary school years, but we started this, this clan together and yeah, that was six snipes and it was awesome. It was really, really cool. I I miss him. I miss him a lot and I'm wondering how he's doing actually. Haven't talked to him in many years, over 15 years. 15 years maybe wow Whew, that's crazy to think about but yeah that that really got me into the competitive scene um and then I started to get into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 I had a really really good clan in there as well I didn't start it but I joined it it was Anarchists of Gaming AOG and I remember I met Picante and Seneca and um, Sniper, what was the name? Sniper Fox or something. And yeah, we were we were a pretty intense squad and we did some tournaments together and that was awesome. Like just being able to really see the skills be put to something, you know, like tournaments and these huge I guess like serious games and like really learning about just the strategy and the tactics of of how to just beat your opponent. Um, so yeah, Call of Duty, Call of Duty did that, and you know with that I'll just keep going down my competitive games here. Um, I guess Dota Two, I was really into that. I think I have like four thousand hours on Dota Two, and just love the team play and being able to, um, yeah, learn learn the skills better and just kind of push the limits of what your character can do and the abilities. And then now, right now I'm playing a lot of overwatch. Um, overwatch is probably my most played game. I would say next to maple story. I'm very into overwatch and, uh, I think I've only gotten to masters once and it's very difficult, but I love just trying to improve myself again and just like being able to be better than I, my previous self. So yeah, the, the, those are the the competitive side of things, um, for sure. Mm. Oh man, I have a few other games that I wrote down here, but I feel like they're just going out of order now. But I have Fable, Fable One for Xbox. Um, I got really immersed with that one. That that was a really really cool game. That one, I felt like. 
I got connected with all the characters in there and being able to choose my side and my path and good and evil. It really made me question a lot of my own morals, I think. I know like we like to just kind of mess around and just like take the evil side, you know, and just like see what happens. But it really made me think about some things on like some of the paths and the choices that I was choosing and why I chose them in my own like almost, I don't know, just who I am as a person for choosing not to save Timmy and to smack the chicken. And it was just all these beautiful things. But (laughs) uh, yeah, that was Fable and then SSX Tricky. That really got me into uh, it's so weird that I wrote down SSX Tricky it's SSSSX I I forgot the song it's a really catchy song but there was some really awesome songs in there and I think I wrote down SSX Tricky is because it really kind of got me into music and appreciation of um, just the artistic sound and how it all flowed in and how important music is Because SSX Chicky did an incredible job of incorporating song with incredible gameplay of snowboarding. And it was just like sinking in so well together. And I was just like blown away by it. I was like, wow, that is awesome. You know, and it's just so cool to see snowboarders and music, awesome music playing in the background. But yeah, that that was really awesome. Um, I have NFL Blitz and NCAA football. I have some sports games here. I was really into football games at one point. I've not into sports, (laughs) you know, not, not really. I mean, I played soccer and stuff. I do love to play like casual sports, I guess. Um, but being able to get into these types of games, it really opened my mind about sports and just in general. And I think like when I see, or I'm at a sports gathering and stuff like that, I can actually appreciate, I don't go out of my way to like watch it or you know maybe if it's like a hyped game that everyone's like into like super bowl or something like that like sure you know i'll turn it on with some chicken wings just an excuse for me to get some good food but like if i'm hanging out with some friends and they're really into sports like i'll actually be really interested into it and like being able to understand what's happening and i really thank ncaa and blitz for like really getting me into that realm in reality, like I think my friend Mike, he was one of my best friends um, back in elementary, middle school, high school, and he really was into sports. And I think right now he's actually like a sports journalist, which is so cool because he's like living his dream right now. Um, but we would play a lot of sports together too, like in in person, in real life. And then when we got tired outside of playing, then we would go inside and play sports games on his his uh, GameCube or Xbox. So it was it was cool. It was really cool. Just I guess learning about something else. I always love learning about things, and maybe that's the thing that. I am learning now about NCAA as I'm talking out loud is that I do really enjoy learning about things and being taught things like new things that people know about that I'm not aware of. Some people really don't like to learn or they get stuck in their ways and they're very just kind of pigeonholed and tunnel visioned um, in a certain way. But I, I don't know, like NCAA, like football games is like such a different style of game that I would think of playing. But I gave it a shot and I was like, this is a lot of fun. Like I can see why, like this gets very competitive and I, yeah, it's really cool. But, um, I just, I just like to have an open mind, I guess, about things. And that's the importance I think about it, man. I was about to go into like some other area of conversation, but we're, we're not going to stray over there. We're going to stay at video games here. Whew. Good job catching yourself to books. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Um, let me think. I I want to say that's kind of just the milestone games. Oh, I also have Goldeneye 007 written down for N64. Um like so that that was before Halo 1 actually, and I said Halo 1 was my first FPS, but Goldeneye was my first one I was like watching, but my mom wouldn't let me play it at the time cuz she thought it was way too violent, you know, <laughs> like Golden Eyes. So I was really young. I think I was in elementary school and she's like, no, you can't play Golden Eye. But I love to like, you know, sneak over to my friend's house and like watch them play. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And kind of I guess that was my first exposure to FPSs. But like playing it myself and getting into it was definitely Halo 1. Yeah, man, I could I could talk about games like all day long, guys. I got to I got to stop myself. Let's let's go to Maple Story. 
We'll finish it up with Maple Story. I think Maple Story does deserve a little bit of a recognition here. As much as I've talked about Maple Story in all my videos, I mean my videos revolve around Maple Story, I think they still deserve yeah, a little shout out here because that game, man, where do I even begin with Maple Story? Whew. It just it taught me everything. You know, like all of the above, life, love, competitiveness, bettering yourself, efficiency. I uh, it just had all of that for me, you know? And keep in mind, I should have probably said this earlier is that you know, we all have different experiences with games. I, like my experience will be very different from what you've experienced. And that's what makes also games really wonderful is that we can all have different experiences and see and feel differently from a game that we've played, even though we've all played the same game, but we might have experienced different experiences. But yeah, Maple Story felt like a beautiful alternate world. You know, not so much nowadays. I'm not going to lie right now. I'm, I don't think I'm as immersed as I was when I was younger, when I was first playing right now, I'm immersed in a different for a different reason. But back then it was immersion of like community in a sense of like a living, breathing world and just this whole online aspect of it. It, it was like, I think, well, that was my first, that was definitely my first MMORPG and my only one, um, I think I tried a 10 day version trial of wow, but didn't get into it. Maple story. Like I just love that cute animated style that just drew me in like in, in, in crazily. Cause that was like when I was getting into like really slice of life animes, you know, from harvest moon. And then like, um, yeah, maple story just came at such that time when I was like really exploring like that style, you know? And, and then also the types of people, that I were I was meeting and I still meet to this day this has not changed is just really caring loving people typically you know and I think it's like we share a lot of the same interests we have a lot of the same personality because we're together with this game called Maple Story we are a community and that was my first also just sense of what a community is like and what it feels to not be alone because but but being alone in a way, you know, because I, I felt very alone, but I felt like, what, what's the word? That people were going through the same things as I was, right? So, yeah, it, you know, people just on that game on Maple Story has a lot of the same interests. We're going through the same stuff, it feels like, and we can relate on a lot of things. That's the word I was looking for, relate. And it's just, it was really cool to feel that and experience that feel and just being able to again, the efficienciness of it and being able to train. And when I was ta talking about what some of my best Maple Story memories, you know, how Mike, um, different Mike, not my best friend, Mike from elementary school, but, um, Mike was teaching me about, you know, how much XP you're getting per minute. Common sense these days of, again, but back then it was like really starting to get my time management, you know, desire and passion going on like, all right, 10 minutes, I can get this much XP and then, you know, kind of timing out my day and what I was going to be doing in Maple Story, And just, uh, man, I just wanted to like keep going back to the community of it. But yeah, it made me feel loved in that game. And it made me love others that were, uh, we're all part of the game. It was like such a special and powerful game for me. And of course, you know, I met some amazing, amazing people in Maple Story that I, I am still friends to very good friends to, to this day. Um, and of course, Tammy, my, my very long relationship that I met from Maple Story, that was just such an incredible experience and a huge stepping stone and a growing time in my life. Um, and it all came from Maple Story. And what Maple Story had to offer was just making me become a better person, you know, <laughs> in a way, and helping me with that sense. Um, and yeah, like just the uh, the types of relationships I was forming on that game, and um, the relationship I was forming with myself, I was I, I was learning a lot. And yeah, I don't know. So. It was a very powerful game for me, for sure. And then, you know, of course, it opened up my avenue for YouTube. 
YouTube, I started with Maple Story. I'm still doing Maple Story, and I I love it. And I found so many awesome people. I found you guys, <laughs> you guys, that shared just interests and appreciated for who I was and who I am. And it's just it was it was great. And uh, you know, I I couldn't have done it without Maple Story. That's for sure. And that was such a huge life changing experience was was um filming my wild hunter in free market for maple story my very first video my intro and just being able to talk be myself really start learning about myself and my needs and what i love and what i don't love and you know what well, just who i am as a person being able to do this and just talking out loud and exploring thoughts and ideas and just expanding the horizons. It's just, it's great. Um, I couldn't, couldn't be more thankful guys. So thank you for that. But that was, that was, uh, I gotta, I gotta give credit to Maple Story for that. You know, I used Maple Story quite a bit as just a, a gateway in my videos. Uh, and I still do at times. But it's not more so of the, the gameplay of Maple, but it's just an excuse for me to be able to talk out loud, tell you guys about my day, have someone listen, you know, about something while I'm playing one of my favorite games. Um, and it was just, it was very therapeutic for me and it still is, you know, it just brings such like so much calmness and I just feel so recharged you know, in a way being able to do that and just being able to create content for Maple. Uh, but yeah, I want to go ahead and just end it there because I could go on crazy tangents and talk about Maple story for even longer. <laughs> I feel like I was really trying to hold myself back on not just like exploring and going off on different ideas and roads, but I appreciate you guys for listening. And thank you for taking the time to to watch and listen this to this podcast and on the my my passion, my love, you know, for for games and just some of the important games that were in my life. Um, I'd be curious. Well, if you guys made it this far <laughs> on what what are some of your top favorite games, you know, and I would always be interested in hearing about them and you guys can share some of your passions and loves and yeah it'd be it'd be awesome to see that but thank you guys i hope you did enjoy this podcast i know my two recent podcasts were oh no no i made three podcasts never mind i don't know what i'm saying ignore ignore that i i felt like a lot of my podcasts were dealing around like work and careers but yeah th this one's going to be a little a little bit different obviously um and my future one i don't know i think it's just whatever is on my mind at the time i'll go ahead and talk about it i hope you did enjoy them and thank you for letting me do this again much love guys we see you guys later goodbye